thoughts. Um, so make sure you like, you share, you comment, get this thing up on the algorithms. So Russia has said the only way out of this is to have a, have a war. And um, Iran has said they will strike back on Israel for um, unaliving the leader of Hamas. And uh, yeah, shit is just fixing to shake up all over that region. Now, if you think that will not affect us here in America, let me just mention a couple of things. One, we will financially support them. We're already broke if you haven't picked up on that yet. Inflation will go up more. We're already can't pay our bills and you know buy groceries. Uh, and then they will probably start sending our people over there. Um, not probably, they will. And um, remember Biden you know, said men and women could be drafted between, uh, I think it's 18 and 26. You remember that? I wonder why he did that, right? Um, but anyway, so it looks like that's gonna maybe more than likely come to fruition. I don't know, what's your thoughts? Welcome to the world of insanity. <laughs>
Let me try something real quick. Maybe it's just on the end of it. Well, you can't really understand what they're saying, and I don't know if they was trying to translate it in the background, but it sounds kind of sketchy, but I'll just read it. It says, Hamas top political leader was killed Wednesday in a pre-dawn airstrike in the Iranian capital. Iran and a militant group said, blaming Israel for the shock assassination that risks escalating into all-out regional war. It says Iran's supreme leader vowed revenge against Israel. And remember, since Ahmadinejad was in office back in 2020, I mean, 2006, he vowed to blow the small hats off the face of the map. And there's been ongoing tension between these two nations since forever, okay? Because we understand that the Iranians, man, they don't want central banks set up by the uh, Rothschild central bank set up in their jurisdiction because they would be considered sovereign. You know, same thing in Syria. Syria is considered sovereign. But yet when you're setting up no-fly zones and you're setting up jurisdictions in foreign lands that have nothing to do to you, what you think people are going to do? They're going to buck up against you, man. Okay, because people want some type of semblance of freedom. They don't want to be boggled down by your tyrannical affairs and your central banks and your fiat currency and your transformers. You know? So now this is looking like this is getting ready to be an all-out regional war, okay? And Russia will get involved. They're going to have to because America, they're going to back Israel. And Russia's going to back Iran. So regardless, this whole uh, 10 7 2, 3 ordeal, which they stated that they've been in war for 300 days now, which is roughly November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Uh, roughly nine months, I think. Nine, nine months or so. You see, but it says Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Net Netanyahu, you know who, said Israel will exact a very heavy price from any aggression against us on any front, but did not mention the killing. It says there are challenging days ahead, he added. So basically, he's going out, he's going all out because he understands that once this war is over, he's going to jail. Okay, he's going to jail for mass genocide, okay, uh, uh, crimes against humanity, war crimes against humanity. And they're going to lock his ass up, man. So he ain't trying to let this go. He's going to escalate it until, he, until, he, until he's completely stopped. And honestly speaking, I don't see this war de-escalating. Okay, this very war that we're dealing with, uh, uh, right along with the economic collapse and the institution and MOTB, this is the road home, man. And this is the war or starting the war that's going to usher in the second coming of Yahweh Shai. So, yeah, he will be stopped. But, <laughs> but... He's going to continue to do it. He's going to continue to go full out. And he is going to go to jail <laughs> in a form of slave and being put in slavery by the, the men of the Lord. And how about Shimi how Bashai? You know, like the scripture said that we should bind their nobles. Hey, he's going straight in captivity if he's not destroyed in a nuclear destruction first or if he doesn't off himself. But we know that he's going to be in the bunker because we know that the small hats, they got first dibs on everything and they very entitled. You see, but overall, man, hey, he's going headfirst in slavery. But if this war ceases to exist or if they ha somehow call a peace treaty, they're going to lock this guy up, man. All right. He has a lot of blood on his hands. But it says Israel had pledged to kill Ishmael, uh, Ishmael Haniye and other Hamas leaders over the group's October 7 attack on the southern Israel that sparked the war in Gaza, which the small heads was behind that. They, they completely started that. Is as the strike came just after Hainei or Hania had attended the inauguration of Iran's new president of Tehran. And hours after Israel targeted the top commander and Iran's ally Hezbollah in the Lebanese capital of Beirut. It says the assassination was potentially explosive amid the region's volatile interwine conflicts because of its target. It said it reads timing and the decision to carry it out uh, to carry carry it out in Tehran, but most dangerous was the potential to push Iran and Israel into a confrontation or a direct confrontation if Iran retaliates, and they're going to retaliate. It reads, the U.S. and other nations scrambled to prevent a wider deadlier conflict, but in a statement 
of the official website, Iranian Supreme Leader Atollah Ali Khamenei said revenge was our duty and that Israel had prepared a harsh punishment for itself by killing the dear guests in our home. Bitter regional rivals, Israel and Iran risked plunging into war earlier this year when Israel hit Iran's embassy in Damascus in April. Iran retaliated and Israel countered in an unprecedented exchange of strikes on each other's soil, but international efforts succeeded in containing that cycle before it spun out of control. But it says Haniyah's killing also could prompt Hamas to pull out of the negotiations for a ceasefire and hostage release deal in the 10-month-old war in Gaza, which U.S. mediators had said were making progress. But it can inflame the already rising tensions between Israel and Hezbollah, which international diplomats were trying to contain at the weekend rocket attack that killed 12 young people, which I believe it was more than that. Okay, you got to understand that these right and left wing media sites, they like to uh, fabricate the numbers, okay, to stage off an all out assault. But in the Israeli controlled Golan Heights, it reads Israel carried out a rare strike Tuesday evening in the Lebanese capital, and it said it killed the top Hezbollah commander allegedly behind a rocket strike. But Hezbollah, which denied any role in the Golden Strike, confirmed the death of Fuad Shakur on Wednesday, saying that he was in the building that was hit. It reads the strike all will also kill three women and two children, according to the Lebanese Health Ministry. But White House National Security John spoke what is his spokesman, John Kirby, said that there was no sign that an escalation is imminent, but in the Middle East and that a ceasefire agreement for Gaza was still possible. He also said that the U.S. could not independently confirm reports of what occurred in Tehran. But a key question is whether Israel told U.S. its top ally ahead of time, man, all right? So basically, man, they're getting ready to go to war, all right? And I'm not going to read all this. This is a damn long article, but basically, like like they said, Israel, they, they finna go to war because the scriptures say peace and safety and sudden destruction. Ain't going to be no peace. All right, that's not in Esau's nature to, to establish peace. So let's go into the book of 2nd Edges 15, and I'm going to start at verses um, 28. And it reads, and it says, Behold, a horrible vision, the appearance there from the east, where the nations and the dragons of Arabia should come out with many chariots, and the multitude of, of them should be carried as the wind upon the earth, and that all they which hear them may fear and tremble, right? You know, because they're going to assemble their militaries and they're going to attack the opposing forces, man. Okay, and they understand that America and Israel are joint allies and whatever they do, they're going to back each other. Even though uh, this guy Biden was complaining, like, well, he was complaining to this guy, Netanyahu, you know who. He was telling me, he said, look, man, you're going to have to chill because, you know, we ain't going to be able to continue to aid you if you're going to continue to go out on all-out assault. But... Like I said earlier, this guy, uh, Net the Not You Know Who, he understands that if he cease fires, he's getting taken in. He's, he's going to jail for war crimes. And he's not finna surrender or he's not getting ready to back down to the to Iran or anybody else. Because like I said, the small has have a, a form of entitlement. You see? So pretty much the third war has already started. It's just a matter of it going nuclear. And that's not gonna happen until the intro until the introduction of the MOTB which is going to be upon the society's collapse, which we're literally right around the corner from. But it says here in the Carmanians, which are the Iranians, because now this war has united the whole Arab world. I mean, not the whole, the whole Muslim world. Okay, from the Libyans to those Ethiopians to the Arabs to the East Indians, even those uh, coolies are getting part of the action, man. But it says the Carmanians raging in wrath should go forth as the wild boars of the wood. And with great power, they should come and join battle with them and should waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians, which that's talking about America, man. OK, because we understand that there's going to be attacks over here. This place is going to be invaded. OK, you already got these migrants of these foreign nationals, Iranian nationals, Ukrainian nationals. You already have them over here. So don't think that they're not planning attacks in these cities to cause civil unrest. All right, because hey, once they start to attack these cities and these downtown infrastructures and these particular state and court buildings and things like that and, and government uh, officials, that's when they're going to declare a state of emergency. And this is why the FBI said any day now, you know, they're expecting something big to go down in this country. 
It says, then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. And if they return themselves, conspiring together in great power to persecute them, then these should be troubled, bled and keep silence through their power and shall flee. And from the land of the Assyrians shall the enemy besiege them. OK, and consume some of them and their host should be fear and dread and strife among their kings. Yeah, man, because, hey, this is going to be a war of all wars. OK, the whole goal was to destroy America. And that's the Lord's whole purpose to blow this place off, to totally decimate this goddamn place. And we're close, brothers. You know, we just got to stay patient. But it reads, it says, behold, the clouds from the east and from the north and to the south. And they are very horrible to look upon, full of wrath and storm. That's going into the chariots, man. Okay, because the Lord is going to, hey, the scriptures say that, uh, roughly paraphrasing it, uh, the Lord should touch down on uh, uh, in Mount Zion, roughly paraphrasing it. And from the east into the west into the north, because the chariots are going to come here. Okay, from the east to the west to the north. Hey, it's going to be a, a, it's going to be a crazy time to behold. This is why we got to be prayed up, stay in the spirit, stay locked in, because things is getting ready to take a turn for the worse for these people, but it's getting ready to, uh, you know, prove for us in our situation. And it says here, behold, the clouds from the east and from the north and unto the south, because they're going to come west. It says they are very horrible to, uh, to look upon, full of wrath and storm, and they should smite upon one another, and they should smite down the great multitude of stars upon the earth. Even their own star and blood should be from the sword into the belly and the dung of men into camels who and there should be great fearfulness and trembling upon the earth and they would see the wrath should be afraid and trembling should come upon them. man. OK, because like I said, this war is going to the scripture said that the earth is going to rock to and fro like a drunkard. OK, because all the missiles that's going to be shot off here, you know. So, yeah, man, a. Hey, Jeremiah 49 and 20, and this is spiritual, and this is the spirit. And one thing I like about this precept is because reading Jeremiah 49 and 20 and Jeremiah 50 and 45, it, it, it proves that the Edomite is the one that's in power. Because you got people out there that's saying Edomite, the, uh, the so-called white man is not the Edomites. But how do you break down Jeremiah 49 and 20 and Jeremiah 50 and 45? But it's given the same account. Now, peep this. It says, therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord. And he that take it, uh, he that have taken against Edom, okay, and his purposes that he had purpose against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock should draw them out, and surely he should make their habitation desolate with them. Okay, it mentioned the Edomites, it mentioned Teman. Now, look at this, Jeremiah 50 and 45. It says, therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord. That he have taken against Babylon and his purpose that he had purpose against the land of the Chaldeans. So Babylon's equated with synonymous with Edom. According, I think it's Psalms 137, when it says, Oh, daughter of Babylon. But he equate the Edomites with the daughter of Babylon. So this proves that Esau is going to be the one that's in rulership prior to the Messiah's return. All right, for all of you out there that say, oh, well, they're the Edomites, they ain't, they've been done away with. No, the Edomite is very alive and well. He's a friendly neighborhood white boy. All right, but it says, therefore, hear you the counsel of the Lord that he have taken against Babylon and its purposes, that he have purpose against the land of the Chaldeans, which is this modern Babylon. It says, surely the least of the flock should draw them out. Surely he should make their habitation desolate with them. Okay, because we know that the land of Israel is going to be totally destroyed as well. Okay, Jeremiah 49 and 20. Matter of fact, let's start at verses uh let's start at verses 19. Matter of fact, let's start at verses uh the whole chapter is good. Let's start at 13. It says, For I've sworn by myself, says the Lord, that Basra, which is modern day America, okay, that's another niggas that was a capital city in Edom. Modern day Basra is right here in America. Okay, the chief, the chief, the chief quarters of Esau's power structure, right here in Babylon, the Great America, and it says here, for I've sworn by myself, says the Lord, that Basra should become a desolation and a reproach and a waste and a curse, and all the cities thereof should be perpetual waste. Meaning every city that they dwell in is going to be totally thrown down. It says a perpetual waste, and it says and I've heard the womb of the Lord, and the ambassador is sent into the heathen saying, Gather ye together and come against her and rise up to battle. 
for lo, I would make thee small among the heathen and despise among men. And everybody understands that this Edomite is the devil. Okay, the whole world have one coming thing. The so-called white man is the devil and they want him out of power. Okay, they've had enough of his of his oppression. Okay, he's still in his still in resources, it's forever wars. People are tired of it, man. Okay, people just want to live and have some type of sovereignty without being fucking oppressed. And that's all that this man do is oppress, oppress, oppress. And it reads, and it says, For I would make thee small among the heathen, despise among men. Thy terribleness have deceived thee. And the pride of thy heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, that holdest the height of the hill. It says, Though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down. From hence, says the Lord. Okay, you know, when they satellites, their space stations, when they claim they have walked on the moon, which never happened, by the way. Okay, I think it was a modern day documentary that exposed that they never made it to the moon. And it makes sense that they never made it to the moon because, for one thing, how can you land on a light with something that's, that, that gives its own light? That's just like if I take a light bulb, I can't hold a light bulb with my bare hands, it's gonna fucking burn because we understand that the moon gives its own light. Okay, it's like a lesser sun almost. So how the hell can a tin can go around the Van Allen belts and land on the moon but you got all the technology in the world today and you can't even make it back? Make it make sense, E. But it says here, thy terribleness have deceived thee and the pride of thy heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock that holdest the height of the hill. It says, though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, which is another sign, it says, the high is the eagle, and I will bring thee down from thence, says Yahweh. Also, Edom should be a desolation. Everyone that go by should be astonished and shall hiss at the plagues thereof. Because when the missiles hit this place, it's, hey, this is going to be publicized. It says, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities thereof, says the Lord, no man should abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. But behold, he should come up from like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the inhabitants of the strong. This is talking about Yahweh Shai. It says, but I will surely make him run away from her. But who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? It says, who is like me and who will appoint me the time? And who is he that shepherd that would stand before me? Wait a minute. 20. It says, therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord. He that have taken against Edom. And his purpose, that he had purpose against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock should draw them out. Surely he should make their inhabitants desolate. Surely he should make their habitations desolate with them. Going into Israel, that land is going to be destroyed as well. America and Israel is going to be perpetual waste. But the uh, land of Israel is going to be built back up. Because that's where the headquarters of the kingdom is going to be. But it reads. That the earth is moved at the noise of their fall. At the cry of the noise, there was heard in the Red Sea. But behold, he should come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra. Okay, and that's talking about them chariots. And in that day shall the heart of the mighty man of Edom be as the heart of a woman in our pangs. Okay. So yeah, man, yeah, how about Shemi Havashai is getting ready to make moves. He's already making moves, so we just got to be patient and stay in the spirit and stay prayed up. But anyway, with that, all praises and glory and honor that's due to you. How about you? How about you? Uh, Lord's will, you were edified until the next lesson.